Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to create portfolio layouts in Photoshop. Okay guys, so sometimes in your career you are at a point like I'm right now where you want to do some printed stuff for your portfolio to present to your clients. And when you do that stuff, you don't only think about uh, your images, but also about layout. So how do I present my images? Maybe you want two images on one page or three on one page. Or maybe you want to do some split screen or yeah, so just some white um, edge around your image. So all these questions and usually if you want to do something like that, you don't think about Photoshop, you think about software like InDesign and all these layout programs. But yeah, simply because I don't have any skills in InDesign, I thought about, hey, why not try Photoshop? And actually it's very, very great to create the layout and also to create some kind of template to save you lot of time in the future. So yeah, like always, let's get started. Okay guys, before we can start, I would like to show you the final result of today's tutorial. So on the right side in my layer stack, you can see that there are many different folders with all kinds of different layer masks. Some of them are for three photographs, some of them are for two or even just one photograph with a smaller or bigger margin. So yeah, if you wonder why I use this folder layer mask setup, well, I will explain that to you later with the photograph, but for the moment, let's get started. So yeah, just go to file and create a new file here. Then go to document type and choose the international paper. Of course, I live in Germany, in Europe, so I use this format if you live in the US. You may have to use different numbers and different um, yeah, aspect ratios and all that stuff. Okay, so size in my case is A4. So usually this format comes with the portrait format, but I'd like to use the widescreen. So I just changed these numbers. So the width is now 297 and the height is 210. Then click OK. And yeah, now Photoshop creates just a white background and this is perfectly fine. Of course, if you want maybe a black or pink or red margin here, then just uh, yeah, change the color. But like I said, I like my margin white. So before we can start, like always, it's now time to think about the different layouts we may want to use for our portfolio. So if you don't have any idea at all, maybe just go to Google, type in fashion portfolio or just go to Lightroom which is, by the way, also a great program if you want to create a portfolio. The only problem I have with Lightroom is that the formats, the size here, you don't have a huge selection. It's just a very yeah, small amount of different formats and no A4, no A3 format, which is usually in Germany the, yeah, the standard um, for portfolios. Then just go to the single page setup and click this little arrow right here. And as you can see, we now have all kinds of different layouts, like one photo with a margin, full screen. We have the panorama version. We also have two or three photographs, so maybe yeah, three in a row. So this program or these layouts give you a first impression of what's possible in Photoshop. So now back in Photoshop, the way you will always start your layouts is go to view and then choose new guide layout. At first, this menu may look a bit confusing because of all these numbers, but actually it's very, very easy. Columns are the vertical lines, rows are the horizontal lines, and the margin is the area around the edge, around the border of your canvas. So let's en uh, disable the margin for the moment and say that we only want maybe just one column, one row, which is just a full screen image. If you want, for example, two images next to each other, then just choose, for example, two columns. And the next value, which is important, is the gutter. It's just the distance between these two images. So currently it's set to two centimeter. Like I said before, I come from Germany, so we use the metric system. If you come from the US, you may have to choose different numbers. I think you'll also use inches and all that stuff. So like I said, the technique is the same, just uh, change the values, the numbers. In my case, I like two centimeters. So now it's time to think about maybe if I want the margin or not. I think that a white margin often makes your photographs look um, a little more, let's say, classy, a little more um, high quality. So let's enable the margin right here. 
Um, for the moment, let's say that I only want one image. So let's go back to one for the columns, one for the rows, and then go back to margin. And in this case, I want the same value, the same number for top, left, bottom, and right. So just type in two centimeters. Of course, if you want, you can also choose a bigger margin, but I usually like to use just one or two centimeters. Then click OK. Then choose your selection tool right here and then just draw a nice selection in between these cross points right here. Of course, if you may mess up, just right click and choose transform selection. Then go to view and enable the snap function. And after that, it's possible to, like a magnet, just snap the selection to any line you want. Then hit enter. Then after that, just click on the new folder icon. Maybe change the name from group one to one photo plus margin two centimeters, sorry, margin two centimeters, and then just click the layer mask. And as you can see, we now have a layer mask with the white inside my selection, and white is always the area that is revealed later on, so white is visible, and black, which is the margin here, is black, which is not visible later. So then just select any image you want. In my case, it's a landscape shot. Just drag and drop it into our selection, um, the size for the moment isn't important, so just hit enter and now just drag it into our folder. And as you can see, Photoshop automatically creates this nice margin simply because of our layer mask. The cool thing about working with folders is that now you can still reposition, um, rotate or scale your image. So just select the layer here, your image, hit Ctrl T and like I said, just scale it and yeah, find the perfect position for your image. The only thing you have to keep in mind is that you always try to stay at least perfectly on the line or a tiny bit outside this line right here because otherwise obviously you will just cut out an area of your photograph. So like I said, just try to keep a little bit outside this edge right here. Okay, so yeah, I think that looks fine. And yeah, that's all you have to do to create cool portfolio layouts, of course. I will now show you some other examples, so for the moment let's make our layer invisible. Just go to view and click on clear guides to remove all these guidelines and then like before click on view and again view guide layout. And for the moment let's say that you want two images, so check number for columns two, rows still one because if you type in for example two, we now actually have a layout for four images. But like I said, I only want two next to each other. The gutter, in my case, it's the same value as my margin, so it's just two centimeters. Um, of course, like I said, you can type in any value you want. Maybe you make the gutter five centimeters. Just keep in mind that if you use very abstract numbers, you may um, have a different aspect ratio, which means that you may lose some areas of your image. So yeah, in my case, let's go back to two. And the margin, like I said before, also two for all these four values. Click OK. Then, like before, choose the selection tool and just again draw a nice selection in between these guidelines. Of course, if you want a second selection, just hit the Shift uh, button on the keyboard to get this plus icon. And like before, just draw a nice selection in between these guides. OK. Then, like before, create again a folder. Let's call that, for example, two photos plus margin two centimeters. And then like before, just click on the layer mask. And if you now just drag and drop um, a second image, in my case it's the same, but I think you know what I mean. So just uh, like before, this, the scale doesn't matter for the moment. Now just drag and drop it into our second folder. And yeah, as you can see now, we have also a margin around and a margin in between these two images. Of course, now, like before, you can hit Ctrl T, maybe rotate it because you want to show it later on in the portrait format. Also, maybe scale it down a tiny bit and find the perfect position, then hit Enter. And now maybe you find a second image and also place it right next to the first one. Okay. So yeah, as you can see, it's actually very easy to create cool layouts in Photoshop. So before we finish this tutorial, I would like to show you some more cool layouts. So like before, go to view and then clear guides, 
Then again, go to view and new guide layout. And now let's, for example, change the number for columns to three. So yeah, as you can see, we now have room for three photographs. But now, as I told you before, the aspect ratio is a bit too widescreen in, in, in my opinion. And you can easily fix that by, for example, change the top and bottom value from two to six centimeters. And as you can see, we're now getting back to our um, common photographic aspect ratio. Then just click OK, for example, or in my case, I will show you a second um, cool looking layout. So again, columns just two. And also keep the value of six for top and bottom, then just click OK. Again, use your selection tool and now just draw a nice mask in between these guidelines and also a bigger one on the right side. Okay, then like before, create a folder. Let's call that one, for example, two photos, big and small. And again, click on the layer mask icon. Then like before, just drag and drop an, an image here into our folder. Okay, then as before, hit Ctrl T to adjust the size. In my case, I will make it now full screen for the right part. Okay, and as you can see, we now have a very cool looking image. Of course, maybe reposition it a bit. Okay, and yeah, as you can see, I think this layout also looks very interesting. Last but not least, I will show you one cool shortcut. If you want to get rid of the guidelines, just hit Ctrl and H to either view the guides or get rid of them because maybe sometimes you just want to look to see if the if the layout looks good or not. Okay guys, that's all I can say about creating layouts in Photoshop. Like I said, it's all about time, your creativity and all that stuff. Of course, if you don't have any ideas at all, just type in fashion photography or portfolio layouts and all these things in Google and then just copy the layout you, you like. So yeah, like always, uh, talking about liking. If you like my video, please give me a thumbs up, check out my Facebook page, my website, and of course, subscribe to my channel. And yeah, like always, stay creative and have fun.